Today we're making a new and improved floating bed with a live edge cedar headboard. That's right, this is my second floating bed and I simplified the design quite a bit, upgraded the size to a queen size, and came up with a way to make the headboard so it doesn't require a massive wide slab like the first one did. And before you even ask, yes, we strength tested it and it's super strong. I'm making the perimeter frame out of one and a half inch steel square tube. Typically I cut steel with my angle grinder, but clamping scrap and using a reciprocating saw works really well too. There's two sets of legs for this bed, and I'm using this one by three rectangular tube for the legs that go right up against the wall. I'm also using it on its flat side as the middle supports. That way I can use half inch thick plywood for the slats that go on top of the one by three and is nice and flush to the top surface of the one and a half inch square tube. That means I did have to cut some notches in the square tube so that these inner supports can bypass the exterior frame, create a little space for the slab headboard and attachment points for the braces that I'll attach to the wall. I love using steel for projects like this. It's so strong. Welding is a lot of fun. Plus, I get to use these really cool magnet clamps. These things make holding your pieces at perfect right angles really easy, and also it's just really cool to use magnets that you can turn on and off. Now, a few of the commenters on the last floating bed that I did were pretty mad that I didn't use magnets to make the bed float, and while I agree that would be awesome, it's a little bit beyond my current set of capabilities. This bed just floats because the legs are mostly hidden by being inset with cantilevers that extend way past them. If you're shorter than three feet tall, yeah, you'll see the legs, or if you just like rolling around on the floor a lot. There's about three and a half feet of cantilever towards the foot of the bed and about two feet on either side. So I wanna make sure that I create a lot of attachment points that'll go through the drywall and into the studs of the wall. So I'm just using some quarter inch flat bar that I welded to the one by three legs. Now, I probably should have used a stud finder to locate the studs and through the wall first and then mark the holes and drill through the flat bar. But for these things, I typically just drill a whole bunch of holes, betting that enough of them will line up to create a nice secure connection. I put the frame up on sawhorses and use my mag switch, switchable magnet clamps to hold this rather heavy headboard assembly in place at a nice right angle. Look at that, so handy. Seriously, if you do metalworking, get these things. They're phenomenal. I cut some one inch angle steel that I welded inside the perimeter frame and this will just create a lip to hold the plywood slats. For the middle legs, I just welded a U-shape out of the square tube. Or maybe it's a C. I magnet clamped it on and welded it in place. Oh, I upgraded to a bigger Forney welder that uses 220, and now I'm literally welding with gas. The client for this renovation project is going to use a duvet cover that drapes over the edges, so I didn't weld in patches on the tube steel. But I did use one of my new favorite Ryobi tools, this little mini belt sander, and sanded the inside edges nice and smooth. Cryolon Fusion All-in-One Spray Paint is my go-to spray paint because you don't need a primer. And I just hit it all with flat white. I'm going to be installing this bed in the room that we're renovating temporarily, but I plan on doing some more work to the walls itself. So I wanted to make it really easy to attach and remove the headboard so that I can later unscrew the bed, do my wall work, and then reattach it. So I used a piece of angle steel and welded on some tabs, and those tabs will slide right down the one by three wall legs. Different mattress brands recommend different spacing on slats. Some want a little bit more airflow. Others say that you can put it right onto a full sheet of plywood. We went somewhere in the middle and made two wide slats. Now before we get to how we made the cedar headboard, let me show you how these cedar slabs were kiln dried. That's right, because our sponsor for this video makes kilns for wood and they're called I dry. Vacuum drying technology used to be out of reach financially for most woodworking businesses, but iDry is working to change that. We recently took a really cool tour of a lumber supply store called AE Wood Products. I'll put a link to that tour in the description. It's actually a really interesting video just to see how a small wood business operates. But for now, let's learn a little bit about kilns and how wood is dried. So over here we have the iDry. So this is some walnut they've had in there. And generally they're about 30 days per load of wood to completely get it down to right around 7% humidity. It's all computer controlled, super precise. And as you can see, man, look at how thick these walls are. 
This is not just a shipping container with a dehumidifier. This is very substantial, and that's because they actually allows them to get a vacuum inside this kiln. And it's basically like the world's biggest oven. And then these pull over, and then you can tighten it down. So literally, if you had some trees and access to logs, some sort of basic mill, and one of these is all you'd really need to get started on a wood business, right? So this could let you harvest and sell the same wood in the same season. And the quality is just gonna be a lot more predictable too. Yes. So shout out to iDrive for sponsoring this video and check the link of the full tour in the description. And now back to the build. So we got these two white cedar slabs. One of them is about an inch and a half thick and has a really cool beetle chewed live edge on just one side. The other one is just about one inch thick and has a full live edge on one side and about a quarter of its length is live edge on the other side. The client wants a headboard that has some small shelves but live edge on both sides. So here's how I made it all work. I split the one inch board to create a shelf that will hide the thickness difference between the two slabs. The color of these slabs isn't matched perfectly, but when I apply simple finish, it'll get it close enough. I then took my jigsaw and cut out some organic-ish shapes that allow the mattress to fit in between these two small shelves. A flat disc on an angle grinder is a really fast and easy way to shape a faux live edge especially in a softwood like this, took seconds. And then I just sanded everything with my orbital sander. Started with 100 grit. The nice people over at AE Wood Products did a great job finishing these slabs. So it really didn't take that long. I started with 120 grit and just worked my way up to 220. The beetle chewed edge looks great, but was a little bit splintery and hairy. So I was very careful sanding this. I wanted to remove the splinters, but not grind through the nice color and texture. So I just used 220 grit here. The back of the headboard is going to be up against the wall and not visible. So I'm going to secure these three pieces two different ways. I'm going to use biscuits and glue to align the pieces and hold them together initially. But because headboards can take a lot of abuse, I'm also going to add some steel mending plates to the back. I was pretty light on the pressure when doing the clamp up just because I didn't want to damage those nice live edges. But from what I hear, you really don't need that much pressure. I added a series of mending plates to secure all three pieces, and then was ready to check the fit on the steel frame. The width of this headboard was actually pretty consistent, but I didn't realize how thick the client's mattress was, so I cut some notches into the headboard so that the bottom live edge would sit below the steel frame. This would have been fine if the mattress was eight inches thick, which is what I assumed. I screwed on the steel bracket, did a little more touch-up sanding, used microfiber rags to wipe off all the sawdust, and then finish it with a nice heavy coat of Maker Brand Simple Finish. This is a plant-based oil and wax finish. It's really easy to apply. You just add a real thick coat, let it sit about 10 minutes, and then use a new clean rag to rub out the excess. The steel frame weighs about 60 to 80 pounds, and after using a stud finder to locate the studs through the wall, I secured it with two and a half inch long screws. Now my random assortment of holes got me into most of the studs, but I did miss a couple, but no big deal. I just drilled a couple additional holes through the steel. I could have done this all before, but it's just so much easier to drill holes downwards than it is laterally. Place the half inch plywood slats. There's about a half to one inch airspace in between them, and then place the mattress, which ended up being 11 inches thick, which meant that very little of the headboard was showing on the top of the bed. So I just pulled the headboard out and reattached the steel bracket a little bit higher. This Joshua Tree bedroom renovation is coming along nicely. The client wanted something that was both warm and minimalistic. The headboard's nice and warm, but I think we may have aired a little too far on the minimalistic side, and the room's coming across as a bit severe. So I've been thinking about doing an archway on that back wall, just about six to eight inches deep that creates a little bit of texture and hides the end grain of the headboard. Now you may recognize these floors. They used to be linoleum tile and we covered them with self-leveling concrete. There's a link to that video in the description. Live edge slabs vary in price so much region to region. So be sure just to check your local wood shops and also check prices on multiple vendors. Lumber yards that supply interior designers tend to charge a lot more than ones that serve people in the trades. The steel though for this whole project wasn't too bad, it was just around $200 to $250. The shelves on the headboard are a bit on the shallow side. There's definitely enough room for a small lamp like this really awesome one from Conway Electric. 
check it out, brass finishes, powder coated steel, and places to charge your phone. But the shelves on the headboard are high enough so where you could put a conventional size nightstand right underneath them and out from the wall a little bit. And I actually think this kind of layering would look really good in the room. Shout out to iDrive for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in drying your own lumber to sell, be sure to check out the links in the description. In addition to selling wood kilns, there's a network of eye dry kilns around the country. And if you have a batch of wood that you need dried, they make these kilns available as a one-off service. That means you don't have to buy a whole kiln. You can actually get your wood dried in the kiln that somebody else paid for and you work out some sort of fair price. So again, lots of good information. Check those links. This is a great metalworking project for beginners. And if you don't have a welder, you could cut pieces of angle steel, you'd be drilling a lot of holes, and then bolt it together. For professional woodworkers, I recommend taking this design and finding a local metal shop that can fabricate up this basic bed frame, because I have had a lot of requests for this bed from people willing to pay over $5,000. So make some money, take the design, go for it. All right, check out some of our other videos. We have a whole bunch of beds, all sorts of projects. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.